make blogging regularly, like once a month, like at the minimum part of your marketing strategy. In all honesty, so much of SEO is a result of providing more helpful content more regularly than your competitors. Whether you want to tackle blogging yourself or outsource this content development, know that blogging and SEO can do big things for your small business. Hey there, you're listening to the Priority Pursuit Podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping small business owners define, maintain, and pursue both their personal and business priorities so they can build lives and businesses that they love. I'm your host, Victoria Rayburn, and today, guys, I am super excited to break down three blog topics you can use to improve your local SEO. But before we get into all of that, Can I share some cold, hard truth, you know, just like small business owner to small business owner? If your website doesn't appear on the first page of Google, you're missing out on business. 97% of people use Google to find local products, services, and businesses. And as a result, SEO, which in case you aren't familiar with, stands for search engine optimization and is like simply a the process of getting your website to the first page of Google for queries related to your products or services. But anyway, yeah, as a result, SEO is the key to getting your information in front of potential customers who are actively looking to invest in what you sell. Now, there are a lot of moving parts to implementing a successful SEO strategy, many of which we have discussed in past episodes of Priority Pursuit, which I would highly recommend checking out. But in this episode, again, we're going to break down three blog topics you can use to improve your local SEO. Now, in a world full of Instagram reels, YouTube videos, podcasts, and seemingly endless other forms of content and media, a question that we are often asked is, is blogging dead? And long story short, absolutely not, especially for small businesses. According to HubSpot, blogs continue to be extremely valuable for lead generation, brand awareness, and SEO, and they're still popular among consumers. In fact, a HubSpot study recently found that 60% of people read at least one blog post a day. And when you think about, you know, your own search habits, you probably definitely check out at least one blog post a day, whether it is a recipe or an article about something within your industry. I can almost guarantee you're looking at blogs on the regular. So no, blogging isn't dead and blogging continues to be one of the most effective and easiest ways to improve your SEO. Yes, video and other things can help with that, but for most small business owners, blogging is something that you can like easily tackle, easily make part of your strategy. And really like you just need your laptop and your brain and a website to put your blog on. But anyway, now it's important to understand that Google's goal is to serve its users well by helping them find content related to their queries as quickly as possible. As a result, when your website regularly features new helpful blog posts, Google is more likely to rank both your website and your blog posts well because you are helping Google achieve its goal of better serving its users by providing valuable content. And assuming your website has a clear message and serves your ideal client well, having your website appear on the first page of Google can dramatically increase your sales for your small business. Now, as a reminder, SEO is simply the process of getting your website and content to the first page of Google. However, there are two kinds of keywords, and so we can really dive into today's topic. I just want to take a second to define those. First of all, the two kinds of keywords are are two kinds of SEO, my apologies, but local SEO and global SEO. Now, local SEO focuses on optimizing a website to improve its visibility and local search results. As a result, if you own a small business and serve a specific area, like as opposed to owning a lot, an online business that serves nationwide or worldwide, local SEO is particularly valuable for local businesses because it more or less exists to help users find local businesses that offer whatever they're looking for. In the meantime, global SEO is used to optimize websites and content for, you guessed it, you know, the whole world. Global SEO is used for websites and content that are not location specific. Now for small businesses, both local and global SEO have their place. However, if you own a local business, it's important to make local SEO part of your marketing strategy because your ideal client becomes so much more likely to find you if your website ranks on the first page of Google. 
Now think about it. When your ideal clients are looking for your products or services, they're likely searching for location. So just as an if like as an example, Indianapolis wedding photographers. You know, if a couple is getting married in the Indianapolis area, chances are they're not going to Google and just searching for wedding photographers. They're searching for a photographer in a specific area. And when you are ranking well on Google for a specific area, and when your ideal clients find your website on the first page of Google, they're going to be much more likely to do business with you simply because honestly, they were able to find your website. They need whatever it is you're offering and they were able to find you quickly and easily. And again, if you've listened to Priority Pursuit past, then you know how much like we emphasize the importance of having a clear message. So very, very short caveat, but SEO is super helpful. However, SEO does not convert. So that simply means SEO can get people to your website, but they're not going to purchase from you unless your message is clear and your website is well-built. Like I said, quick caveat, moving on. But, well, I guess, okay, a little bit more. But if you do need help defining your message, be sure to click out the link in the show notes. We have a whole mini course on exactly how small businesses can clarify their message so that way their marketing actually works. So be sure to check that out. Now, okay, there are several things you can do to improve your local local SEO. And if you're interested in learning more, we highly recommend going back and listening to episode 49, how to improve your local ranking on Google. However, in this episode, I want to discuss three blog topics you can use to improve your local SEO. Now, these suggestions aren't to say that you should stop producing non-location specific blog posts. As I mentioned before, SEO, global SEO should be part of your marketing strategy. However, regularly blogging about topics that are relevant to your service area will almost certainly benefit your local search rankings. But let's dive into the three topics. So first, if you aren't currently blogging your work, you likely should be. When you write about your products or services and optimize your content with location-specific keywords, assuming the keywords are actually relevant to your post, like don't just keyword stuff, keyword needs to be relevant. But yes, when you write about your products or services and optimize your content with location-specific keywords, um, you are helping Google further associate you with your location and see your business as an authority in your area. And you're also giving potential customers an opportunity to find your blog posts. So as a longtime wedding photographer, I have some kind of wedding photography specific examples to show you guys throughout this episode, but know that this can still be adjusted for whatever industry that you work in. And I'll try to throw in some others too, but just for example, as a wedding photographer, I share photos from the weddings I shoot in blog posts, and then I optimize those blog posts for those venues when, for like for the venue wherever the wedding was photographed. Now, this not only helps Google further associate like Victoria Rayburn photography with the service area, but it also helps other engaged couples find my website. So they might go to um, Google, and then basically they're looking for pictures at a specific venue, but like we're thinking about the buyer's journey a little bit, but yeah, basically every small business's buyer's journey, it's going to look a little different, but in the wedding industry, couples typically book their wedding venue first as they explore venue options. They tend to do like a lot of Googling to both research and a look at photos of potential wedding venues that they're considering. Now, because I optimize my blog posts for keywords related to those venues, couples are very likely to come across my blog posts and photos during their search process and then check out the rest of my website. Basically, they find a blog. They're like, oh, I wonder what what my wedding could look like there. Click on the blog, like, oh, this is nice. And then because my website is built strategically, it then takes them to find more information about my services. Now, again, depending on what your small business offers, your buyer's journey might look drastically different. However, whether you own a landscaping company, a bakery, or any other kind of small local business, regularly showcasing and blogging about your work and optimizing these posts for local search will help establish your business as a local authority. And this will very likely improve your website's visibility and local search results, drive more traffic to your website, and then also attract new customers so that your small business can grow. Now, while blogging can have big benefits for your SEO, writer's block is real. 
However, guys, when you have a template to work from, blogging your work becomes much easier. So just as a for instance, when I blog weddings, I follow the same template every time. If you'd like help creating a template for your blog, tune in to episode 66, what to write about when blogging your work, and we will be sure to include that episode in the show notes. Now, when we discuss the importance of blogging your work, a common question that Kelly and I get asked um, from other small business owners is, do I have to blog all of my work? And the answer is no, unless blogging is part of your typical client experience. Blogging can be a great free customer service tactic. For example, if you're a wedding photographer, blogging your clients' weddings is a little thing you can do to make them feel special, showcase your work, and also drive traffic to your website. If your clients are expecting a blog post, you need to create a blog post. Otherwise, they'll be left wondering why their wedding project or whatever wasn't worth blogging about, resulting in a less than stellar customer experience with you. So just for instance, as a wedding photographer, my clients all know that they are getting blog posts. They're going to have a blog post within a week of their wedding. They're going to, it's going to be filled with previews. And that is where they're going to see the bulk of their previews. It would be so, so insulting and just terrible customer service if I were to shoot a wedding and be like, mm, no, this is just not worthy of being on my blog. That like That is going to eat at them. That is going to bother them. And again, it's going to result in a less than stellar customer service experience. That being said, you know, photographers, because while we are on the topic, you, if it's, you know, blogging is part of your client experience, you want to make sure that you do that, but you can absolutely curate what you show and other industries, you can do this as well. So for instance, you know, I have, especially when I was first starting out, I shot my fair share of weddings, like where the reception was in a gym. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to blog this wedding, but I am only putting in the blog, like the getting ready photos and the portraits and some details where you can't really tell that they're in a gym, but nope, not putting any free dancing photos, not showing because I want to make sure that, you know, it's reflective of the business I want to build and the brand and my brand. So that said though, if blogging isn't part of your customer experience, you don't have to blog everything. Instead, I would just recommend blogging work that one like shows how you can solve your ideal customer's problem. So if, you know, a potential client comes to that blog, they can kind of get an idea of like, okay, this is what it's going to look like to work with them. And this is how they can help me. Or something else, another instance you'll want to blog is like work that you love to do again. So remember what you show is what you are going to likely continue to sell. So if there's a project that you loved doing it, then yeah, make sure you blog it. It'll be so fun. And then last, like it just shows you like another blog, um, another reason to blog your work would be um, anything that you can share that shows you are an expert at what you do. So again, like if you create something particularly amazing, blog about it. It'll be great. Okay, so that is blog topic number one. Moving on to number two, in addition to blogging your work, you can also improve your local SEO by blogging about location-specific topics. Now, outside of trying to find a nearby product or service to solve a problem, your ideal client is also likely Googling other questions related to or adjacent to your service and location. As a result, if you write blog posts that answer your ideal or potential client's questions, your ideal clients will likely find your content when they Google their questions, which will then encourage them to check out the rest of your website. And then your website as a whole will likely rank better because your location specific content will help Google further associate you with that area and then see you as an authority figure in the area that you serve. So for example, if you're a wedding photographer, I know guys, this is just where my head is. I promise there are some other examples coming. But if you're a wedding photographer, a few location specific things you could blog about would be like best places to take engagement photos in insert your city or um, like insert an adjective here, but like wedding venues in insert a city. So whether it's like best or like most elegant wedding venues, but like insert insert, insert city um, and then where to take your wedding photos in insert city. Now, if you own a landscaping business, like I said, I promise, you know, other examples are coming. You might blog about like native plants to include in your insert city landscape design or how to care for your lawn in insert city or seasonal landscaping tips for insert city homeowners. 
Deciding which location-specific topics to blog about will require some brainstorming, but as you ponder this, simply ask yourself, what would my ideal client like to know more about, and what is my ideal client likely Googling? Whatever the answer, chances are it will serve your best customers well and improve your SEO. And guys, if you really need some more, like just more inspiration for this, I highly recommend checking out ChatGPT. Like if you just go to ChatGPT, which if you're not familiar, it's like an AI bot that gives you really great information and you it can do all kinds of things with it. Definitely recommend checking it out. But you could absolutely ask ChatGPT to give you a list of potential blog topics that you could write about to improve your local search as a landscaper, baker, whatever it is you do in your specific city. Now, they're not probably all going to be like super stellar ideas and they might not be relevant to your ideal client, but it is a really great place to start. Now, last but not least, blogging about local events, organizations, or even other small businesses can also help improve your local SEO and show that you're an active member of the community you serve. By sharing this kind of content, you're going to demonstrate that you're invested in the area and help further establish your business as a local leader. So for example, if you're a wedding photographer, you might blog about like the best bridal shows in insert your city. Now this would allow you to highlight your favorite bridal shows and mention the fact that you'll be there or like the best wedding vendors in insert city. This would allow you to highlight some of your favorite local wedding vendors or small businesses. And then maybe like the best date night spots in insert city. You could use this blog to serve couples well and encourage them to make reservations after their engagement photos. Like just as an example. And then going back to our landscaper example, you know, if you're a landscaper, you might blog about the best plant nurseries in Insert Your City or the best places to buy outdoor furniture in Insert Your City or how to create a beautiful outdoor space while supporting like Insert Your City local businesses. Now, this topic will likely take some thought and research. And again, you can always check out ChatGPT, super helpful. However, blogging about local events, organizations, and other small businesses is a great way to improve your local SEO, serve your customers, and build relationships with other small businesses. Now, if you want to connect with potential customers, establish yourself as an authority in your industry and area, and improve your local SEO, I want to encourage you to use these blog topics to improve your local SEO and then also to make blogging regularly, like once a month, like at the minimum part of your marketing strategy. In all honesty, so much of SEO is a result of providing more helpful content more regularly than your competitors. Whether you want to tackle blogging yourself or outsource this content development, know that blogging and SEO can do big things for your small business. By the way, we do blog for our agency clients. If you would like to learn more about that, I'll include the link in the show notes, but you can check out our digital marketing packages and get that off your plate all together. Now guys, before we officially sign off, I do want to tell our photographer friends about a resource that we have for them. And guys, we promise we have more SEO resources for other small business owners coming very soon. So please don't feel left out. But photographers, if you go to treefrogmarketing.com slash SEO for photographers, that's all one word, you'll find a guide that walks you through the five most effective things you can do to improve your SEO as a photographer. Again, visit treefrogmarketing.com slash SEO for photographers to download the five most effective ways to improve your SEO as a photographer. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Priority Pursuit. As always, please know that Kelly, the Tree Frog team, and I are rooting for you, your small business, and your priorities. And we can't wait to chat with you again next week.